It's my favorite time of the year. Not the year, the month. What am I even saying? All yellow, that's the vibe. I am ready for this. Hello book reading friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Mel and today I bring you all the books I want to read in May, also known as my May TBR. I am incredibly excited about May. I really do think that the list that I have crafted for this month is going to be top tier. A lot of five star predictions in here. I have also already started one of the books that I am going to be reading in May because as I am filming this it is May 2nd so I have gotten started with my reading a little bit and I am just excited for everything that's to come throughout the month. I believe I believe I have like 12 books that I put in here. Maybe too much, maybe too little. We shall see what happens. But I think this month, I always say this, but I really do think this is the month where I'm going to primarily stick to my TBR just because I made it the day of. I literally finalized my TBR yesterday after switching and not switching and just leaving it as it is. So we shall see if it ends up happening. But I think it's 12 books that I plan to read this month. And before I start with the video, I also need to give a massive thank Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Book of the Month. If you've been here for a while, then you'd be no stranger to Book of the Month. They are a super popular and fast-growing book service for readers. Their mission every month is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers find books that they genuinely love. Their team vets hundreds of books each month and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles so you can spend more time reading and less time researching. Book of the Month is also risk-free. You can skip any month, anytime, and you will will not be charged for that month. And if you guys know me, then you'd know that I have been subscribed to Book of the Month for a while, so working with them is an absolute dream. I love what they do. I just love the fact that they have new released hardcover fiction that usually sells for around $30 as a new release in stores, and they typically have it for $14.99, so they do have a markdown from those really big prices. So it's really honestly helpful to save a lot of money, which is something that I love to do when I'm buying books. And as always, they have sent me all of the books from May. So let us run through all of these bad boys. For their historical fiction, we have Things We Lost to the Water, a moving multi-generational saga about one family's attempts to weather the storms confronting them in an adopted home. For their contemporary fiction, we have How Lucky. Being the sole witness to a crime proves complicated in this funny, heartwarming story of a hero hiding in plain sight. For the thriller, we have The Last Thing He Told Me, the propulsive story of a new wife and stepmother who must unravel the mystery left behind when her husband disappears. For a contemporary fiction, we have Imposter Syndrome. Big Brother turns out to be Big Sister in this piercing take on Silicon Valley and the misogyny that keeps it ticking. And last but not least, for the fantasy, we have Ariadne. This reimagined story of the Princess of Crete is a riveting tale of love and betrayal. I have been seeing Ariadne everywhere and I was incredibly excited for it, so definitely one of the picks that I saw and when I am glad the book of the month has this here because I am most likely going to squeeze this during May. We shall see. Maybe I'll even put this in the 24 hour readathon vlog. So if you do want to sign up for book of the month, I am leaving my link in the description as well as the code that you can use this month to get your first book for $9.99 and that is May Reads. So you can use that code at checkout again to get your first book for $9.99. And yeah, thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring this video. Without further ado, let's jump right into our May TBR. First book in the TBR is the book that I am currently reading, and that is Get Alive, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I genuinely did not think I was going to read this book this month, but my Patreons chose this book for me, and I am so glad that they did. My Patreons every month get to choose one book for my TBR, and I am just reeling. I am 100 pages in already. In this, we follow Chloe Brown, who has a chronic illness, and she is very much into her work. She pours everything that she has into to it and her sisters are constantly nagging her to get alive Chloe, do something exciting. And so she crafts this list of things that she'd need to do to get alive except that she needs a little bit of help and so she enlists the help of the superintendent of her building, Redford Morgan, and he will help her fulfill this list of things that she wants to do. There is a budding romance between the two of them and if you see me reading the rest of the Brown Sister books just ignore me and just let me go through quietly and peacefully because I really do think I may just read all of 
them, which was not in the plans or in the works, but that may be what I end up doing. Then I have my Patreon book club picks for the month of May, which if you do want to join us, the link is down in the description. Again, we call ourselves The Citadel. There is a Discord exclusive content. We read books every month as part of our book club. I do a reading vlog for it. We do a live discussion for it. It's just a time thing and I just love it here so much. And our official buddy read is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. Now, I've been excited to read this for a while and then I kind of saw that people weren't necessarily liking it, so I was really scared to go into it. However, it's finally time. I really do think I'm going to enjoy this. I may be part of the minority in here and if I am, I'll love it anyway. So this is the buddy read for my Patreon for the month of May. And I know in this one, we have a competition that takes place every seven years, if I am not mistaken, yes. It's called the Aegon and every seven years, the gods are banished kind of from Olympus and put onto Earth. Be a part of this competition where mortals get to hunt them for their powers. And if they do acquire the gods' powers, then they become gods themselves. And so in this one, we have Lor, whose parents were killed long ago by the people who take part in the competition. And one day, Athena comes knocking on her door, asking for help, as well as her best friend. And they start going on this journey, trying to find out exactly what happened to Lor's parents. And a war is also potentially breaking out with one of the people who stole one of the god's powers. So it's a whole thing. It seems to have a lot of moving parts, a lot of fantastical elements. It is a standalone. I am excited for it. I love mythology. So I just really hope that I end up enjoying this because the premise of this just sounds incredible. And the secondary book club pick that we have for my Patreon because we always choose two books. It's cra it's a crazy time up in here, okay? it's I love it so much. It's Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I have never read a Brandy Sandy. I'm excited that my first Brandy Sandy is gonna be YA and I think this is a lot of people's favorites. I just know that the main character is called Spensa, so let's just look at the flap for a little tiny bit and then let's see the synopsis. Spensa's world has been under attack for decades. Now pilots are the heroes of what's left of the human race and becoming one has always been Spensa's dream. Since she was a little girl, she has imagined soaring skyward and proving her bravery, but her fate is intertwined with her father's, a pilot himself who was killed years ago when he abruptly deserted his steam. Flight school might be a long shot, but she is determined to fly. I love vague synopses because they don't give me anything to go on. So I'm guessing this is going to be Spencer's journey as she goes to flight school and figures out exactly what went down with her father and how she can become a pilot herself and kind of be, I guess, some sort of like legendary person. I'm also going to guess based on this wormhole here that there is going to be some sort of intergalactic war and she's going to be in the midst of it. This month, I am also reading In the Dream House by Carmen Machado. This is a memoir, but a lot of people I've seen a little bit of reviews going around and the way that people describe this book is that this is like a haunting memoir because it's very strong but everybody has loved it so much that I am very excited to go into this. The spine though really kills me. It's just oh a stunning moment. So I am really, really interested to see how this is going to go down because I know Carmen Machado in this one talks about a relationship gone bad and kind of the mechanisms and cultural representation of psychological abuse. And so that is all that I really need to know before going into this one. I have never read a memoir before. I typically don't read nonfiction, but this one is one that I am definitely interested in. And this is also for a cool video that I am planning. So stay tuned for that. If you have any guests, as to what the video will be. Leave it down in the comments to see if any of you get it right. I am also reading The Damned by Renee Adier, and this is the second book in The Beautiful. The Beautiful, just look at them. Oh my god. Look at them side by side. Aren't these stunning? Like, I just love how they match so well. And in this duology, we follow Celine after she arrives in New Orleans from Paris. She is a dressmaker. And once she gets to New Orleans, she kind of starts seeing this dynamic that is very unusual. A lot of people seem to be separating themselves into groups. A lot of mysterious deaths happening. A lot of supernatural instances kind of taking place. And she doesn't really understand 
understand what is going on. And as the person who's committing these murders, a serial killer really has to lean on their sides. She gets stuck in an ongoing eternal feud between the creatures of a night and she needs to find a way to get out of it or be damned. And the first one ends in a cliffhanger. Literally, I was reeling by the end of it. I also read The Beautiful in one sitting, so maybe this one will be the same. Maybe this one will be the five star. We shall see what happens as I go into this one, but I am excited to kind of finish out another series. It's a duology, really, but I am excited to finish it up. More romance. Who is she? Don't know her. Don't know what has happened to me, but Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams is also in my TBR for the month of May. I loved the Bromance Book Club, and I know that the second one is typically people's favorite, so I am just really intrigued to see how this will go down because in this one we follow Liv, who is Thea's sister, who was the main character in the first one. And I didn't necessarily love Liv. She was a very infuriating character in book one, so I am kind of ready for a redemption arc, but also I'm really interested to see how that will go down and how Lissa K. Adams will make me love Liv. Brayden Mac thinks reading romance novels makes him an expert in love. That he does believe. Mac is hilarious, honestly. Liv has a dream job as a sous chef at Nashville's hottest restaurant. Too bad the celebrity chef owner is less than charming behind kitchen doors. After she catches him harassing a young hostess, she confronts him and gets fired. Liv vows revenge, but she'll need assistance to take on the powerful chef. That's all I need to know. I'm gonna guess that she enlists Mac for this help, and I'm going to guess that they go undercover and try and catch the owner of the restaurant and bring him down maybe and they fall in love in the process. Something along those lines. I really do think this is gonna feel more rom com -y maybe than the first one. Mac is a very comedic character so I think this may be just a little bit funnier than the first one and I'm there for that because I'm there for the comedy and the romance. I think the romances in between will be great help to keep the reading going and to kind of again cleanse my palate between fantasies or sci-fis. The next book I am reading in the month of May is Shadow of Night by Deborah Harkness. Now, I do not have the second book physically with me, which makes me... Oh my god, y'all, when I tell you I was so stressed because the third book is already here and I ordered the second one first and I am just waiting for the second one to get here so that I can start reading it. It's honestly like the one thing that I want to be reading right now. This is the second book in A Discovery of Witches. I absolutely adored A Discovery of Witches and I am so excited to go into the second book. The cliffhanger at the end of book one was insanity. In this one, we follow Diana, who is a witch, and she has kind of been in denial of the witchcraft for her entire life because of the way that her parents were murdered when she was very, very young. And one day she finds an alchemical text in the library of the university she works in, the Ashmole 782, and a lot of supernatural creatures start being really interested in this alchemical text, except that we don't necessarily know why. What we do know, though, is that an interspecies war is breaking out because of this text and while this is all going down she also meets the love of my life Matthew Claremont who is a vampire and they start working together to figure out why people want this text why it's so important and in the midst of that they start falling for each other but that's also forbidden a forbidden romance between a vampire and a witch is just everything so I am ready to crack open my second copy and just speed through it and read it. It is set to be very dense. A lot of people love the second book, but a lot of people hate the second book because I know exactly why. Because it's it's based on the ending of the first book, but I can't say what happens. I understand why, but I think it's the angst and I think it's the period, if you know what I mean. That will make me really, really love book two. Bring it on, Shadow of Night. Bring it on. On. Another book that I am reading, and this is going to be a month-long experiment, is House of Leaves. Now, I don't know anything about House of Leaves, absolutely nothing, so don't even ask me what this book is about. I'm going into this blind, I just know there is a character called Zampano, and I just know there's a character named Johnny, and there is an outer body sexual experience in here, and the book is bigger on the inside than it appears on the outside. I I don't know what I'm getting myself into. I have heard that people have slowly lost their minds reading this book, so I really am scared going into this. 
but this is the one book that I'm going to be spreading out throughout the entire month. So it is going to be kind of a longer spread read. And I also have a video planned for this. I am going to have a special guest in this video. And I'm excited to get into this because I am not reading it alone because I would never read this book alone. So I'm glad that I at least have a little bit of moral kind of support going into this because I know it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Another chunker that I'm hoping to get into this month and reread and tab and annotate is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I was supposed to be reading this with my girls and then I didn't because I was drowning in books in April and April was just, just a crazy month but hopefully I will be able to catch up by the third book hopefully fingers crossed maybe but I am hoping to read Lady Midnight so it is part of the Shadowhunter world and in this one we follow the Carstairs and the Blackthorns and we follow specifically Emma and Julian who are Parabati and Emma is set to be like the female Jace in regards to fighting she is one of the best Shadowhunters of her time and a lot of serial murders start going down in LA which is the institute that they're a part of and these bodies that are turning up and being murdered are both Shadowhunter and Downworlder alike. So an uneasy, unlikely alliance is formed between these two people to try and figure out why these people are turning up dead. And this is also somehow connected to Emma's parents. It's a lot of moving elements and parts, I think, in plots. The Dark Artifices is probably one of the strongest ones, but I also really love the characters. So I really want to go back into this, reread it, tab it, because I read it so long ago. It's been a, such a long time since I read these that I really want to go back into it, reappoint myself with the characters, and just love the story because I remember reeling with the entirety of the trilogy. Another rollover book that I have that I have yet to read because I didn't read it in April is The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Not gonna go into the synopsis of this because it is a rollover book, so I am reading this in May. I am going to be doing a vlog for it for those of you asking. I know you guys want a reading vlog on it, so it's definitely coming. I also have an exciting unboxing that is Crown of Gilded Bones related, so that will also be in the vlog. I am just really excited to read this. Have heard a lot of mixed reviews ever since it released, so I am a little bit scared going into this. Kind of like, I don't know if I love it or hate it, but here we are. It's what we're doing, and we'll see what I think about it. But I am also reading The Crown of Gilded Bones this month. Next up, I have The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I am finally getting around to reading this. I am not going to lie, what did it for me was the Lumicrate tote bag that came in the March box. I saw the illustration for The Bear and the Nightingale and I started reeling. I was like, I need to read this right now. And then a lot of other illustrations started coming up on my Instagram. And I was just like, this looks so stunning. The characters look incredible in illustration. So that's what really prompted me into being able, not being able, but putting this into my TBR. I am definitely going to be reading it this month. Again, it's a short fantasy. It is a part of a series, but it is rather short. And in this one, I know we follow Vasya, who loves Russian folklore. She loves telling stories in the dark. She loves hearing all about it and being told all of these folklore things. And her father, who is a widow, ended up marrying her now stepmother who comes from Moscow. And she forbids her family to have any of these beliefs of any religion, of any folklore, of any anything. And Vasya really fears what this might bring to her family. And indeed, something dark comes with that forbidding that her stepmother does in the household. And as the evil starts creeping closer and closer to the village that they live in and the whereabouts of the village start getting weaker and weaker. Vasya may just need to call upon this power that she has kept very hidden in order to protect everyone that she loves. And I am just really excited to go into this. I know this has been around for such a long time. I know a lot of people love this trilogy and I am really excited to go into this and see what I think about it. The illustrations are really what did it for me though. I'm not gonna lie. The next one that I am reading is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas and I don't really know too much about this when I am looking it up on my phone. All I know is that it is said to be a dark academia stream of consciousness. So it's not necessarily what we typically see in dark academia. And I do have the audiobook for this. I am going to be audiobooking this because I don't have the physical. And I am intrigued to see how the audiobook is for this one because I think everybody who's read this book has read it physically. It's also been a book that has a lot of mixed reviews. But let's see. A story about a dangerously curious young undergrad graduate whose rebelliousness leads her to discover a shocking secret involving an exclusive circle of students and the 
dark truth beneath her school's promise of prestige. So again, very standard, or at least it seems very standard, dark academia. Catherine House also seems to be the school that this person will attempt. Oh, so okay, this kind of reminds me of Truly Devious a little bit. For those lucky few selected, tuition, room, and board are free. So it's very selective. Interesting. I'm definitely intrigued about this one. The audiobook is so long, so long, but I'm going to push through and we're gonna read it and I'm going to um, see what I think. And last but not least, I have Bunny by Mona Awad. Another weird book that a lot of people seem to love and hate and hate to love and love to hate, everything in between. Again, I'm very intrigued to see what I think about this one. I have seen a lot of people that I know unhaul this book lately. A little bit scary in terms of like, will I like it? Will I not like it? But I do have the ebook for it. So I'm just, I'm just here trying to vibe and see what I personally think about it. I don't know if this is another dark academia book. I think it might be because I know we follow the main character Samantha and she absolutely hates everything to do with her MFA program. She is studying writing fiction and she hates her kind of classmates that are in that class. They call themselves the bunnies and they seem to move and speak as they were one person and she receives an invitation to be a part of the bunnies. Once she receives that invitation she leaves her friend Ava behind and she starts experiencing the rituals off campus that start becoming very sinister. So it does kind of seem like dark academia, so I think this is kind of unwittingly a, <laughs> a dark academia kind of centered month that I didn't really expect to be. I mean, it's not really centered around dark academia, but I am reading several of them, if you know what I mean. And those are all the books that I am reading in May. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that I am not forgetting anything. I don't think that I am, but those are all of the books that I am reading in May. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you guys are reading in May. How many books are there on your TBR? Is there anything that you are particularly looking forward to? Maybe any new releases? And if you have read any of these, also let me know down in the comments how you enjoyed them. If you reach the end of the video, let's leave some lemon emojis down below. I think lemon and yellow is like my vibe for the month of May. So leave a lemon or any yellow emoji that you'd like to drop in there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I am constantly uploading bookish videos that I'm sure you don't want to miss as well as doing weekly reading sprints every Friday and if you want more exclusive content live streams one-on-one -on -one access to me the book club picks and everything in between you can join us on my patreon we call ourselves the citadel the link for that is down in the description box as well as all of the links to my social media again thank you so much to book of the month for sponsoring today's video don't forget that you can use the code may reads to get your first book for 9.99 the link for that is also at the top of the description and yeah I love you guys so, so much, and I shall see you on the next one. Bye, guys.